you might as well put your time and energy into something that is going to be a bit less passive and a bit more constructive to your learning. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> Hello everybody, so my name is Amelia and I'm a first year medical student. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my biggest study tips if you are starting medical school this September. So if that is the case, make sure you watch along. I'm basically going to be telling you everything that I've spent the past 12 months learning. So you might as well start with all this knowledge. I am wishing somebody made this video when I was starting medical school. Tip number one would be to find what works. So what you may have been doing for A level or GCSE may not necessarily work when you start medical school. It's so, so different to anything you would have done. What worked may not work now. So don't spend a significant amount of time doing something that doesn't work. If it's not working, try something else. There's so many different ways to study just because loads of people are doing one thing doesn't mean you should be doing one thing find what works for you so that means you try four five six ten twenty different methods of learning go for it you don't want to spend months and months and months doing something that isn't working because you just don't know what else to do there's so many different study methods out there so many different revision techniques just find what works for you it's such an individual thing and don't waste your time on something that isn't working that brings me on to my second point which is do not make notes i spent the first three months of medical school making lecture transcripts why did i do that so I'd be watching the lecture and I'd just be typing out everything the lecturer is saying. How crazy. Why would I do that to myself? It's three hours of nothing. Don't make lecture transcripts like I did because it's such a waste of time and it's such a passive way of learning. You might as well put your time and energy into something that is going to be a bit less passive and a bit more constructive to your learning. There's hundreds of lecture transcripts because other people have done it also. When you start, There'll be notes flying around that the years above will be more than happy to send you the notes they made. So be a bit lazy for once. If you're a med student, I can imagine you're not lazy and you've always really, really, really worked hard. So you might as well take this just this one time to be a little bit lazy. Work, I always get this wrong. Work smarter, not harder. That's it. Tip number three is revise as you go. I've mentioned this in other videos, but it's just so important. Do not learn something and then not look at it until you're revising for your exam. It's just a recipe for disaster. You want to be looking at things multiple times over multiple months and revisiting topics, whether that's using spaced repetition or just reading through your notes that you made. I'm just contradicting myself here. Don't make notes. <laughs> Whatever it is, just exposure make sure you expose yourself to things multiple times this brings me on to tip number four which is don't buy textbooks it's such a waste of money the library literally has every single book that you will ever need every single one and if it doesn't there will be an online version somewhere so don't waste your money it's such a waste of money and you can spend that on something else there will be a massive list of books that are recommended for you to get and you don't need to buy them just because they're recommended doesn't mean you need to have them in your personal collection you can get them when you need them from the library tip number five is keep on top of work weekly so make sure by the end of that week you have done all the work that you need to do don't let that work roll into next week because then you let it roll into the next week and it just builds up. When they say medicine is difficult because of the quantity, they are not lying. So do not make your life harder. Why would you make your life harder? You want to make your life as easy as possible. First step to an easy life is doing the work when you need to do it and not having a massive mountain of work to do three months before your exam. So just make sure that every piece of work, no matter how big or small, don't let it roll on to the next week. Easy peasy. Just make sure you complete that week's work 
within that week because it just piles up and you're not going to be enjoying your life three months before exams if you've got a massive mountain of work on top of the revision you've got to do. Tip number six, to make sure you understand everything before you move on. I know I just said make sure you do all the work. Yeah, make sure you do all the work, but make sure you understand it because there'll be things that you just don't get. It's natural when you don't get something and when you find things difficult, you think, right, I'll leave that until later. Even worse than a massive pile of work that you have to do is a massive pile of work of things that you don't understand. That's even worse. You can tell I'm speaking from experience. So make sure you make a conscious effort to understand everything before you move on. Even if you hate it, even if it's the worst thing ever, even if you don't remember it, just make sure you understand it at least because if you understand it at the time, when you revisit it, when you're revising, you will thank yourself so much. When you go through it the next time, you might have forgotten it, but it'll come back really, really quick. So do yourself a favor and just learn everything properly when you need to. So tip number seven is making use of past paper questions. This is a really difficult one because there's not that many past paper questions out there, but just make use of the ones you have got. So past paper questions, gold dust, but they are also like chef's kit exam technique is so important and when I started medical school my exam technique was awful. Building on your exam technique is half the battle essentially. A lot of the time I would lose marks because I didn't understand what the question was asking me and you get better at that by practicing with exam questions. You kind of learn words that are going to be linked to something, you learn patterns, you learn what they're likely to be asking. That is making your chances of getting the answer right even bigger. Use resources, use the questions that your university send out because they ask and word questions in such a similar way. So questions that they release as your marks or formatives will be very similar to the questions that you're going to be examined on because the mocks, they are designed to give you a taster of your exams. So just make use of them, make use of the commentaries and the explanations of why the answer is the answer. I put the commentaries onto flashcards so that I had the extra information in my head before my exams. Make use of PassMed. PassMed is a bit clinical for first year. Set it on the really easy level and use PassMed. I didn't do that and I really wish I did because a lot of my friends did and it worked wonders for them and it'll just even increase your confidence on exams and exam technique. Practice makes perfect. Tip number eight is to work mad like a nine to five. It's so important to find a balance between not working enough from the start and working too much. You don't want to work too much and burn out too early. So it's really important to find a healthy balance because it is basically like a full-time job. Even if you're not working the hours nine to five, but just make sure you're finding time to socialize, relax, but also putting the hours in. That's really important. And my last tip, tip number nine, to make use of working in groups. Obviously, I know that everybody has different working styles. Some people work a lot better on their own than they do in groups, but it's just so important to take advantage of everyone's different strengths because you learn so much from other people and it's really important to take advantage of that. Even if you just do a few group sessions now and then, I think it's really important to work with other people and learn from other people because you will learn things that you wouldn't have even thought to learn on your own. They are my top tips for starting medical school and studying at medical school. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed this video, I would really love it if you would like and comment down below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! <laughs>